Sales communication, it can be a bit of a delicate art. Ask the right questions and you're gonna better understand where your buyer is, where they wanna to get to, and then you can position your product as the bridge to get from one side to the other. Ask them bad questions and, well, they're gonna switch off, they're gonna put up their guard and you're never gonna be able to effectively communicate the value of your product or service to them. And so in the last video, we covered four questions that you should never ever ask a prospect. In this video, we're gonna cover four additional questions that you should ask your buyer every single time. Hi, my name is Will and I make selling simple. Now the first question you should ask your buyers, and this doesn't come at the end of the process, this comes throughout the entirety of the sales process, does it make sense to, and then dot, 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 does it make sense to do this? Does it make sense to get the contract signed today? Does it make sense to get John on the phone tomorrow for a follow-up meeting? Does it make sense to, does it make sense to, does it make sense to? The reason we're asking this question is that it drives the sales process towards a logical conclusion. This isn't, hey, do you feel like getting signed up today? Do you feel like progressing this large, complex B2B deal towards a conclusion? It's, hey, Logically, would it make sense to do this instead? Logically, would it make sense to do this? This question is also relatively open-ended in that it allows the buyer to push back on what you think is the next best step of the process. This allows them, the buyer, to coach you, the seller, on what the next step is. So let's say I'm selling Salesman.com Academy to a VP of sales and I say, okay, does it make sense to organize internally the budgets and come back to me with the budget so we can see if we're a good fit to work together. The profit might go, yes, that makes total sense. That's the next step. Let's book a meeting to confirm this tomorrow morning. Or they might say no, in which case I'm gonna go, okay, well, what would be the next step? What does it make sense to do to move things forward? And they will coach me. And they might turn and go, nope, I've already got the budget. I know exactly what it is. It's this, can we move forward now? So hopefully that makes sense and you can see how does it make sense to as a question is used throughout the sales process within salesman.com academy and in the Selling a book. We call this a micro close and you should be doing it over and over and over again to make sure that everyone is on the straight and narrow. You want your sales process to start one place and be a straight line to the next. You don't want it to do what most sellers and buyers fall into the trap of, of it being all over the place like this and coming all the way around and maybe getting to the other end. The straighter, the more straightforward the sales process is, the quicker you're gonna close more deals. The next question that you should always ask your prospects is, what's stopping you from solving this issue yourself? And this proactively deals with one of the most common objections that all sellers in the complex B2B space have, and that is what's called the DIY objection. So for example, if you come to me and you're trying to sell me marketing services, well, I know that I could do most of that marketing myself. Now, maybe you can do it better. Maybe you can do it more efficiently. Maybe you've got better creatives on your team that can do it in a more exciting way. But I know I probably could do it myself. And you want to uncover this at the beginning of the sales process because this is part of qualifying the buyer. If the buyer believes that they can do it themselves, why are they gonna pay you for the privilege of helping out? Now, what you're looking for when you ask this question, you're looking for the buyer to say, well, I could do this, but I don't have the time or I don't quite have the expertise. Once you understand that, that is basically half the sale done. That's half of the influence that's required to get the deal over the line absolutely nailed. Because whenever the buyer turns around towards the end of the process and goes, oh, well, I don't know about this, you just give them back what they told you. Hey, you said that you'd love to do this. You said that you'd almost do it yourself, but you just don't have the time. And that becomes part of your personalized value proposition to that individual. So for example, with us and salesman.com academy, we don't just help sellers find and close my deals in the next 30 days. We will save you a bunch of time and get you ramped up and onboarded and skilled up in weeks rather than months or decades. So do you see how I used this question to deal with the DIY objection and then leverage what they told me, what's stopping them from doing it themselves to add to a value proposition, to make that value proposition personalized and more effective for that individual that we're selling to. The next question is an obvious question to ask, is in every qualification framework that has ever existed in many different sales processes, yet few salespeople seem to ask it. The question is, when do you want to solve this buy? This question gives us a time frame to work to. If the buyer says, this sounds amazing, we definitely wanna do it, but we wanna start five years from now, then unless you're gonna be in your sales job for the next five to 10 years, this person is not qualified and you shouldn't be spending any more time with them. Inversely, if the buyer says, hey, we wanna get this done next week, but you know that there's a three month implementation process, then you need to set their expectations, otherwise they're gonna be disappointed, and of course the deal isn't gonna come in. And as a word of warning, if the buyer says, hmm, I don't really know when we wanna get this solved by, then you are clearly not a priority, or the problem that you solve for your product or service is 
not a priority. If you're not priority number one, two, or three in a long list of corporate priorities that your average B2B decision maker will have, then you're never gonna get the deal done. If there's not a time frame in place, if they don't care to solve it by a particular date, then you're not a priority, nobody cares. This individual is not qualified and you should probably move on to a different prospect. And the final question that you should be asking again throughout the entirety of the sales process, but especially at the end of every single meeting that you have with the buyer is if we solve X, will you commit to Y? Because what you're doing as a B2B salesperson is exchanging value. You're not just giving value and hoping for a deal at the other end of the process. It's a constant exchange. Hey, if I stay late after work, to get this paperwork sorted so that the deal can progress forward, will you book a meeting with me tomorrow morning to run through it and get it signed off? It's always an exchange. If I do this, will you do that? If I put pricing and a proposal together, will you help me organize a meeting with the decision makers next week so that we can pull it all together and make a decision? Again and again and again, you need to exchange value with the buyer. Now, of course, sometimes you might give a little bit of value and you might take a lot. Sometimes you might give a lot up front to start to build trust and rapport, and then you just take a little bit from them but there's always got to be an exchange. If you give, 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 and give, well, they're probably just aligning you to give them a proposal, to give them pricing, so that they can leverage you to get a discount from someone else. Remember, you are a professional. You're not some sleazy used car salesperson who basically doesn't need to exist because all of the information about every car that you'd want to buy new or, or semi-new, secondhand, is available on the internet. There's unlimited reviews for cars. You're in B2B sales. A lot of the specifications of your product or service is probably available online, but buyers still want to speak to sellers in our space. Buyers still want to hear your expertise, your market knowledge. They want you to influence them and nudge them to making a conclusion so that they actually get their problem solved. And the only way that you can do that effectively is by partnering with them rather than just being this suck up that runs around and does everything at their whim and never gets anything in return. You need to partner because your goal is revenue generation. You're not in customer service. You're not particularly there to make the buyer feel good and to stroke their ego. You are there to drive revenue. You literally get paid a commission on the revenue that you generate. So always exchange value with the buyer rather than just giving it blindly. And you'll find that your buyers, your prospects, they respect you for it because they don't want to work with just some schmuck paperwork pusher. They want to work with an expert in the industry that can help them solve so there are four questions that you should be asking throughout the entirety of the sales process. Some of them allow you to exchange value with the prospect. Some of them are used in the qualification process that many sellers just seem to skip. All of them though are super effective at building value and getting deals done. So if you enjoyed this video, why not click the video that's on the screen right now and continue making selling simple.